Hey beauty queens, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my PCOS journey. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoy these sort of videos. If you don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you can see all my fire videos. So what this video is not gonna be is a how-to video. This is not a how-to heal from PCOS, how to get pregnant with PCOS. This is not a how to maintain your symptoms of PCOS. This is specifically a what to expect if you have PCOS through my personal experience, okay? I just wanna be very clear, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, and the things that I found has been a lot of research, whether it's been through Google, talking to my doctors, sometimes it's just like people's TikTok videos that are explaining what happened to them when they were going through the same thing I'm going through right now. If you guys get this video to a thousand likes, I will do a follow-up video talking more specifically about what I've been doing to maintain my symptoms of PCOS and that will be specific to that. I will touch on it a little bit here because obviously my journey is gonna, there's gonna be discussion of what I've been taking, what I've been doing, how I've been feeling, but if you would like a very specific video about like steps of what you can take to make yourself feel better. Don't forget to like that video or comment below also like I want to know more and I would love to do that. But like I said, I would like to reiterate, I am not a scientist, doctor. I just know what's working for me and I hope that me being transparent with what's been working with me will help it work better for you, especially if you're younger. If you're a teenager, girl, buckle up. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this together. So the way I like to do my videos, if you're new here, is I kinda like to do things while I'm talking to you guys. Think of it as more of a FaceTime phone call or like a really long voice note, okay? I'm gonna be putting on my skincare and talking about that as I go, but this is just a what to expect with PCOS video. Let's get into it. <laughs> Woo, that was a very long intro. That was one of my longest intros in a long time, but I just felt like all that needed to be said because I just don't want to steer you guys in the wrong direction and I'm not going to act like I know everything about everything. There's just so many people on the internet with their bachelor's degrees from TikTok. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or they have a YouTube degree. Like they think they know everything about everything, but like you can't negate people's personal experiences, but also you do have to follow science, but then there's just so much conspiracy when it comes to the medicine world, especially when you're in the US. So it's just like, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my hair up because I took a shower this morning and my face is dry. So I do have to put on some skincare. There we go. Hair is up. So let's get into this video. And I haven't done my skincare routine in such a long time because PCOS can take everything, all every ounce of energy that you have in your body, PCOS can take that away from you, okay? Let's do a story time of when I found out and discovered that PCOS. Two years ago, I like to make my face moist before I put any skincare on. I wash my face, so I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna double cleanse with a toner. This is Versed Weekend Glow Daily Brightening Solution. Okay, so when I discovered I had PCOS, it was two years ago, and I went to my OBGYN and I came with just like anger in my body. I was just so annoyed, super frustrated. I was going to the gym all the time doing the Stairmaster five, four or five times a week. I would wait, I would lift the weights. I was going to the gym consistently. I was also playing tennis. There was just a lot, like I was a very active person. I would rock climb, like I would do it all. Maybe, I, now that I look back, I probably could have worked out a little bit more, but I do work out more then I don't work out, if that makes sense. So I was very frustrated. So I went to my doctor and I said, I go to the gym, I could do the Stairmaster for 30 to 45 minutes. Why doesn't my body look like it? So he said, you know what? We're gonna do blood work. We're gonna check your levels. We're gonna give you a pap smear and do all that. And we'll follow up once we know more. I had my follow-up appointment. I also had expressed at this original appointment, I was supposed to be a wellness visit, 
and it didn't end up being just a regular preventative visit because I really had issues and just so you guys know if you're in America and you're there for your regular preventive visit and you bring issues to the, the doctor it's no longer a preventative visit it's now a medical visit so they'll charge you for that so don't think it's gonna be covered um, I'm gonna put this face mask on this is the Kale's rare earth deep pore cleansing mask it's so good so one of the things I'd realized was like I knew like I'm coming with issues because I worked in insurance so I'm willing to pay the money to get this result so the first thing that my OBGYN told me to do was go on birth control because my hormones were insane I had PMS for three weeks out of the month and it was severe to the point where I can't move and it wasn't that it hurt it was my mental health I wasn't in any pain exactly I just was very unhappy all the time. I lost hope. I just didn't feel good. I just want to put this to protect my hair. Yeah, there we go. I had no hope. I didn't feel good. I felt like, what's the point? Super hopeless. Very fatigued. I'm very happy I expressed this to my doctor because that's not normal. Yes, we get PMS. Yes, we get mood swings. But to get so deep and dark for such a long period of time throughout the month is not normal. I did have a regular period and there's some people with PCOS that do not have a regular period. And my friend is a good example. She actually had the fibroids and everything and she had the beard hair and everything. So it was the fact that I wasn't losing weight. That was the first sign and I went to the doctor. But the second sign was I had beard hair on my chin. And at the time, I was just waxing my beard all the time and then I was just over it. I was tired of maintaining this beard because every time around my period, chin hairs would just pop up out of nowhere and I'm like, I don't feel feminine, like I don't feel good in my body. I went ahead and started getting laser hair removal and that kind of stopped the hair from growing back because facial hair is very hormonal so it was it's not going to be permanent but it definitely was helping with how much it grew back. He was like, you know what, I'm going to put you on birth control mostly for your hormones but it will also help you with your mental health. So I said, okay, I'm willing to try everything. Then on the initial appointment, it's weird because now that I think about it, I don't think that he put me on like metformin immediately. Metformin is a, a medication that usually are given to people with prediabetes. It helps with like insulin resistance, things like that. So I didn't, ha I haven't had gotten my blood work back at that time, but he said, put, he put me on metformin. I said, okay, whatever. I got the prescription, I got my blood work done, and then it did come back that my testosterone levels are higher which is one of the symptoms of PCOS, so it's an indicator. Uh, but the rest of my blood work looked really good other than the fact that I was vitamin D deficient. So I went on this birth control and then I went on metformin at the same time. The metformin made me feel so nauseous and I've been on birth control before and it's funny because the first time I was on birth control, I lost 70 pounds. So don't let the people on the internet scare you. Like a lot of people are like, you go on birth control, you're gonna gain weight. But if you already have like mental health issues or like a medical hormonal imbalance, it can actually help you with losing weight and that's just my personal experience i'm not saying that's gonna happen to everyone that's just my personal experience and it was pretty much great from there i started losing weight again but the metformin was making me so nauseous i only lasted about a week onto metformin what they were supposed to do is give me like a small dose and then bring it up throughout time and that's not what they did they just gave me a ton of freaking milligrams of this stuff don't remember the exact thing it was a thousand and I just felt so sick, like I would have to pull over on the side of the road because I would just feel so nauseous. So I was like, this isn't working for me. Like, I need more, like this is not it. So I took myself off metformin and then I went back to my follow-up appointment and I said, I'm not taking metformin anymore because I think the real reason why they put me onto it is because it can help with weight loss because you're so nauseous, you don't feel like eating, you don't feel good. So you're eating less and naturally you're gonna lose weight. But honestly, if you don't, deal with the root cause of the problem I just feel like the weight would have just came back anyway but I did tell my doctor I said my mental health feels so much better I feel so much more clear like I just feel better so I stuck with my birth control and I was that was probably the best moments of my life being on birth control that time I was like oh my god like I feel relieved my beard hair stopped growing back as fast I already had laser but the hair on my lip would grow back so much faster than it does 
now and I'm gonna get into what happened. So I'm gonna say like a year and a half later, I decided that I didn't wanna be on birth control anymore. I was feeling really good and I knew I had PCOS, but in my mind, I said, okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to maintain my PCOS without a Band-Aid in my brain. That was what was supposed to happen. So I went and found like outdoor activities. I also changed how I worked out. So my doctor made it very clear that people with PCOS shouldn't have their heart rate go past like 150. You don't want to have a really high heart rate. You want to have a very moderate heart rate when you're working out because if you sweat too much or if you go too crazy, your cortisol levels will rise. And I'm not a doctor, but if I'm if I get this right, cortisol is a stress hormone, and instead of you losing weight, it starts storing everything instead because you're stressed out, your body is triggered. It's like, what is happening? Something's wrong. Let's store everything just in case. So your body's not operating in the way it's supposed to operate. So I was very disciplined in that. I said, I'm gonna just walk around. I'm not gonna work out too much. It didn't matter as much when I was on the birth control because that was balancing my hormone. But once I got off, like little by little, I felt lazier and lazier and lazier. Then I got more emotional because I wasn't getting the endorphins. I wasn't getting the exercise to make me feel better. And then I started going to the gym and then I was like, I would get there and I couldn't get motivated. Like, I'm already here. Like, just do the exercise. So because I took myself off birth control and that was the one thing that was keeping my mental health stable and then I wasn't exercising as much, I slowly started to get into a deep, dark depression. So step one is that I went to the doctor. Step two, they put me on stuff. Step three, I took myself off because I was confused. And the problem was that there's not a lot of information about PCOS on the internet. There's not a lot of people telling you what to expect. And the fact that there's just not a cure, it's like, what do you want me to do about this particular situation? You feel like you have no control over this because you don't know what to do. So I'm gonna say in the beginning of the year and for the first three months of the year, I could barely brush my teeth. I could barely get work done. Nothing motivated me. I wanted to quit YouTube because I just was not mentally there. I thought because I was so unhappy and just so low energy because PCOS can cause fatigue. I was so low energy. My mental health was all over the place that I just thought that maybe my passion for creating videos was gone, that this was not supposed to be what I do. And luckily, I went ahead and I do this thing called CR, Celebrate Recovery, which is like for people who have addictions, hurts, or hangups. And we do roundtables like AA, except like Christian based. And I went and I confided in people because in the past when I got really depressed, I didn't say anything to anybody. And I was really happy that I took that step, like to have community to give me a hug and hold me when I needed it because I was so dark and it was just like, it was just little by little and to the point where I felt like there was no return. So what happened was is that I met a boy and I was so happy and like excited and you could see on my social, my personality and I was just like a bright light. And then the more and more we talked and the longer our relationship started to grow, the worse and negative and anxious and depressed and just bad, I was just bad vibes. I got and he called me and we were talking. He said, you need to go to the doctor. And I was like, oh my God, like I do need to go to the doctor. And then when I started going to the doctor, this is the part that kills me because I think that this is what caused me to get really deep in my depression, but I'm happy that it happened <laughs> because I don't think I would be where I am right now doing this video for you if this didn't go in the way that it did. And I just wanna be very clear, I'm very Christian so usually like when I'm feeling hopeless or if I feel like I need strength, I would just run to my religion. I would go to God for everything. But at that time, my mind wasn't there. I had not, I couldn't even come up with the prayer because I was so low. I didn't even know what to ask for because I just didn't care. I had no hope. This is a really bad example, but like if you're really sick and the doctor tells you have 10 days to live, you can go one way and be like, I'm gonna live my life to the fullest. Or you could be really super depressed and be like, you know what, what's the point? I'm not gonna do anything. So I was already at that point where I was like, what's the point? I don't wanna do anything. God, take me as soon as possible. That was my brain. Like, this earth sucks. I don't really wanna even be here. I had nothing to hope for. So I got really dark. So if you're a teenager on here, if you're a young adult and you're feeling like that, this is, I don't wanna say it's normal because it's not normal, but you're not alone in that. And it's important for you to go talk to someone about it. And now if you have a family that doesn't really believe in mental health, Go to your doctor 
especially if you know you have PCOS, say, hey, I have PCOS. My mental health is suffering. Tell them how you're feeling. Like, I feel really sad, depressed. It might just be your hormones. It might be trauma from your past. I do have trauma from my past. And also studies show that trauma can be the reason why your PCOS symptoms are flared up, right? If you have a bad relationship with your mom, a female in your life, your PCOS is just like off the wall. Small studies, small research, don't know how valid they are, but the point is, is that if you're not yourself, your hormones might have a lot to do with it. So you're not alone in that because I was going crazy. I felt like I was literally going crazy. And like I said, I got to the point where I couldn't even brush my teeth. I couldn't even do, I, this is my first time doing a skincare routine in, since January. I did one because I had to, and I have not done it since. I was so dark that I just couldn't even move. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wash this off and I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna wipe this off, but in the next part of this video, I'm gonna talk about the pressures of being told to take Ozempic, advocating for yourself with your doctor, and also just what the next steps can be so that way you can feel a lot more brighter, happier, and I just wanna go through everything that I went through in that time frame. But let me go wash my face off real quick. I'll be right back. I just love how clear my skin be getting after that mask. Like it feels so freaking good. I do feel like I got stuff in my eye though. Ugh. I don't have a moisturizing toner. That would be my go-to right now, but that's okay. I already double cleanse. You don't need to use as many toners, y'all. I'm just trying to find something. This has AHA. I have this Peach and Lily toner and then I have this Weekend Glow. They both have age, so I'm just gonna not even bother with that. What I will do while my face is kind of damp is put some hyaluronic acid from Kales on my face. A little. I'm running out, that's how you know I really love it. Just like a serum because my face is not moisturized. Especially after that mask, that is like a detox mask. I just feel like you need as much moisturization after that, because it is, this is a clay mask. So it's very intense. It's very intense, but it's very nice. It feels very good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use this Kale's Vitamin C. It, this also has hyaluronic acid. I'm actually gonna wait for this to dry. Probably should've put this on first. Vitamin C is a very weak, very weak chemical. Oh, it be stinging my life. It's be stinging me. I have another full bottle of this stuff because it just is so good. And I'll link all of it in the description box, guys. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this. I don't think I have really many wrinkles, but I don't want to put too many chemicals on my face right now. This is like a clearing mask, Dr. Jart. And this is a wrinkle solution. Let's see what's in here. Orange peel. It doesn't say it's it doesn't moisturize or anything, but hey, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Anyway, all right, so back to the story. When my boyfriend had said to me, cause he's my boyfriend now, he wasn't even my boyfriend at the time. But when he said to me, I see a difference in you. I feel like you need to see a doctor. The reason why I decided to indulge that was because I was waking up in the morning eating breakfast and then immediately after eating breakfast i was exhausted <laughs> i literally oh i just wiped all the serum off on my towel i literally couldn't cope i would wake up at 7 a.m let's just say eat breakfast and then i would be back to sleep after my meetings at 9 30 10 or i would get through majority of the morning but be so fatigued by the time like noon came or one o'clock came that i had to take a nap i was napping every day every day i was napping oh my god this is such a jelly mask this is like the most slippery mask i've ever used i'm not used to them being this slick but i definitely want to get it on my forehead because that's where wrinkles happen and right here i'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit I forget that you can cut mask to customize to fit your face. I'd be forgetting that I could do that. I could not get through the day and then every time I would eat lunch, I would be like, okay, maybe I'm just hungry. Maybe that's why I'm fatigued. Maybe I'm just not feeling good because I didn't eat or something like that. And sure enough, I would eat food and I couldn't cope. I needed a nap. I would get 
extremely tired after eating. But I just knew that that was not normal, that I was not supposed to be feeling tired every day. Like people would be like, how are you? And I would be like, I'm tired. There was the fact that I couldn't get through my normal tasks throughout the day. I didn't even have the energy to exercise because I was so tired. I was always napping. Even today, I still struggle with fatigue a little bit. It's not too bad. It's not as bad as it was before I addressed the situation, but it got really bad, y'all, to be completely transparent. And my boyfriend was, he just knew if I didn't answer the phone or something, he just knew I was napping. Like, he just knew. I was sleep and even for the last couple days recently I have not napped once I don't think I try but then I'm just there and I'm like I'm not really that tired I think my body just has created a habit and I'm just so used to doing it and now I just sit there and I'm like I'm not even tired like I thought I was because it wasn't so bad anymore because I have new things that I'm doing but I got so tired and then that led to really deep dark depression and I went to the doctor and I was desperate. I was like, I'm going to go to every doctor's appointment. I'm going to find out. And luckily, I do have a doctor that I sing with at church. And she was telling me, go get all your blood work done. Just go get all your blood work done. Because I was saying how tired I was. I didn't express all the rest of my symptoms because I didn't really know I was depressed at that time. I thought I was just really tired. But your hormones can really make you feel awful. And um, I went and got the blood work. I told my doctor everything. She's my PCP. I said, I want my full blood panel done. I want all my hormone levels done i want my vitamin levels done i could be vitamin d deficient because i thought that as well because i remember i was on vitamin d a couple years ago and i just took myself off of it and i tend to do that a lot i just am like i don't need this anymore but girl yes you do yes you freaking do <laughs> so i was like maybe i'm just vitamin d deficient but i walked into the office they weighed me with my purse my clothes like they weighed me with all this stuff so on record it looked as if i gained weight i didn't gain weight it's just that I was fully clothed, which is fine. Usually I am fully clothed, but I had my big purse with a camera and a laptop in it. And I'm like, so y'all just gonna make me weigh myself with my big purse? The purse is this freaking big. So I walk in and I was, I, they were like, what are you here for today? I was like, I'm here for my preventive, but I've just been feeling so tired and I just don't wanna feel like this anymore. And then I also told, I, you know, told her that I used to be on birth control for my PMS. And I was like, my PMS is really bad, I think. I'm not sure. I took myself off because my period was longer on birth control than off. Because when I'm off birth control, it's only three days, which is really not normal. So it's probably bad. But as soon as, like, I walked in that place, they were trying to push Ozempic on me. Like, the nurse, she was like, yeah, I started Ozempic. And it was the best thing i ever done. And I'm like, I'm not even here for that. I'm not here to lose weight. I'm here to not be tired anymore. This thing is so freaking slippery, it's annoying. This is probably my least favorite mask from Dr. Jart. So annoying. Thermal sensitive gel. Jeez. It's annoying. This is bunching up right here. I can't even get it to stay. So she came in talking about Ozempic, and then my doctor came in with some lady, and then she started talking about Ozempic, and I, and she was like, oh, we're going to test you for sleep apnea, and we're going to test you, and we're going to give you a Ozempic prescription, and blah, blah, blah. And in my mind, I'm like, you don't want to wait for my, like, blood test to come back before you start pushing Ozempic on me? Like, this is crazy. This is, like, really scary. I'll do a separate video on about, like, the how the whole doctor's appointment went, but I knew that I didn't want to be, like, put on an injection that doesn't have a lot of signs behind it because I don't have diabetes so why am I taking a diabetic medication and then I was like well, what happens when I get off of it and I don't do the lifestyle changes because they promote the Ozempic but they're not promoting the lifestyle changes they're not saying hey you have to eat healthier and do this and I found that kind of weird I was really turned off by that and I think this is where the real deep depression started coming in because I started rethinking everything I ever believed in I've never been a weight loss queen I never been the weight loss promoting type I just never was that girl so it was like really killing me that there was a chance that I was gonna have to be on a medication that I don't want to be on I don't want to be on Ozempic that's not what I want to do because I don't care to lose weight I just care to have higher energy and in their mind they're like well, if you lose weight and my doctor has never tried to make me lose weight before like she's always been like you're healthy you don't need to if you don't want to whatever like long term you might need to eventually but it's not showing up in your blood work that it's a problem so I just was shocked that she was even saying that to me and um, it just really took me for a loop because 
I've been promoting that I'm healthy this whole time because I have been like I really have had great blood work. I've been, I'm a I was a consistent gym goer. I ate healthy ish. Like I'm not perfect, but it just took me for a whirl spin. Like people had already assumed that I was unhealthy because I was fat, and now when someone's telling me that I could possibly be unhealthy because I'm fat, it really messed with my mental health. So I went back to my friend who's a doctor and I told her everything that had happened and she was like let me just wait for your blood work to come back don't take anything wait for your blood work but I ended up getting blood work the same day while she was there and she looked at it and she said girl you're vitamin D deficient like why don't you just start there and I was like okay but one of the things that I found is that being like vitamin deficient or having issues with your vitamin levels can be a symptom of your PCOS I was like all right I'm gonna go back on my vitamin D eventually because I had to wait like two or three weeks for a follow-up appointment with my PCP. And I was like, you know what? It's good to know, like I felt good to know I was vitamin D deficient and I was deficient in a lot of other things as well, but that was like the main one that my doctor said that if you're vitamin D deficient, it can completely change your life. Just being on it for a little while, you could see a difference in your fatigue and everything. So that could have just been the issue with my tiredness, but then my PCP was telling me about the sleep apnea and my friend who's also a doctor agreed, no, like you are overweight, that can affect your sleep. It won't hurt to, not, to go and get the test done, right? Go get the initial test done and just see what it is. So I'm gonna say two weeks go by, I'm not on anything yet because I hadn't had my follow-up and it was like a Sunday and I went to church and then I went home and I slept the whole rest of the day. Then I woke up and I was like, I'm gonna be productive today. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna be so productive. And I wasn't, I couldn't. I literally slept that whole day away. I couldn't work. I just couldn't, I just couldn't cope. I just couldn't get through the day. And I was crying. Cause I was like, I just, I wanna be productive. I was so upset. I wanted to be productive so bad, but I just couldn't. My body wasn't allowing me to be productive. I felt like a failure. I felt, wow, like, Leslie, you've been unhealthy this whole time. You allowed yourself to get this fat. You should have known better. You should have been more efficient with your weight. You were lying to yourself all these years. You said, you told all these people that you're healthy and fat. Clearly, it's not true because you're struggling. Like, I made up all this narrative, and I just kept crying and being upset. And just, it was just awful, like, awful. So then the next day came that it was a Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday came and I felt the exact same way. Like I could not, I would be in the shower crying. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I had made an initial, like an analysis and I said, yo, like I'm gonna go on antidepressants. I can't take this anymore. I need antidepressants now. And I called every psychiatrist that I could find. Cause I said, I'm gonna go on. I had a plan in my head. I said, I'm gonna get antidepressants. I'm gonna eat healthy so I can undo everything. I'm gonna use medicine as a food or use my food as medicine and I'm gonna reverse everything. Like I'm gonna do it through a diet. I couldn't do it in that moment because I didn't care about anything. So it was hard for me to care about what I was eating, but I didn't care about anything. But I was like, you know what, Leslie, you're gonna do this. You're gonna be disciplined in this and you're gonna do a really good job. I called every doctor. There were, nobody was taking new, new patients, which is really crazy. Nobody's accepting new patients or the next availability was like in June. And I was like, I can't wait till June. And I'm on the phone and I'm crying. And they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, I just can't wait till June or I just really need to see someone. I really feel like I need antidepressants. I really need help. And it was sad that I couldn't really get help. I guess the only thing you really can do is go to the hospital if you're struggling because no one is available to help you. Like as for someone who needs medication, I'm sure that there's like psychologists maybe available. But what I was looking for, I was like, you're gonna medicate me because I need to feel better. That's what I was thinking. And then like literally, after calling like my 12th doctor, cause I really called so many doctors that day. I get a notification on my phone and it said, your prescription's here. Your prescription's ready for pickup. And I'm like, oh my God, my birth control. I remember how good my birth control used to make me feel. And everything changed after that. <laughs> okay, it is time to take it off, take it off. This was a very frustrating mask. I'll just say that usually. I love Dr. Dart, but that one was not it. I just, it just doesn't, it's not hitting the same like the rest of the masks that I've ever used. Usually I like to put like the serum back on. Like usually like I'll leave the rest of the serum uh, and put it in my fridge and use it. But good, luckily I have one from last time 
I just fold it in half and put it in my fridge and put it on for like moisturization because this one's actually a hyaluronic acid mask. And it says on here, hydration sheet. So you guys can save the serum. I'm probably gonna throw it out now that I stick my fingers on there like that. Probably gonna throw it out now. But I just know I need moisturization. I needed it. There we go. Oh, it feels so freaking good. Okay. Noise. This is Kale's Ultra Facial Cream. It's a really nice moisturizer. I very much recommend it. Very good. You only need a little bit and it works really good. And it'll spread around your face very evenly and nicely. So after I'd called all those doctors, I got a notification on my phone for a for my birth control prescription. And it all came rushing into me. Oh my gosh, like girl, your birth control is supposed to help you with this. Go back on your birth control until you can actually see a therapist or maybe this will make you feel better until and to the point where you don't need antidepressants. This could be your antidepressant. So I call the pharmacy or I look at it and I say, okay, let me look at the prescriptions that need to be refilled from the past. And one of the things that I saw was vitamin D. So I put in for a request for my vitamin D to be replenished or refilled. And they accidentally sent over like an infant one. So it didn't go through. And I was like, okay, like, <laughs> it's fine. So I called the pharmacy and I'm like, hey, like what's going on with the vitamin D? They were like, this one didn't go through because like I said, it was for a child. But there is an old one that you have up until June. Do you want me to just refill that one? The way I just knew it was God. Like the way I just knew, I was like, this is God. So I rush over like to that pharmacy, like my life depended on it because I really was feeling bad. I was feeling so, so awful. And I went and picked up the birth, the birth control and I also picked up the vitamin D. And what are the chances that I started my period that day? So not only was I like really fatigued and tired and depressed, my period started. So that's probably why I was feeling even more bad. I was feeling worse because my period was coming and I was PMSing really bad. But I was able to start my birth control that day because that was the first day of my period. Y'all, I was so excited and happy. I was like, your girl is back. I wasn't back, not right, not that night because I took it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just live my life. I woke up the next day literally so refreshed and granted, it probably was because it's the beginning of my cycle and usually I feel a lot more energetic after like I get my period or whatever. So it just felt good, like I felt amazing. And I started crying because I just felt so good because I haven't felt this good in a really long time. It was just like a cycle, like a non-stop cycle. And here we are. We're only about this far in to my birth control. These are the pills I'm on now because I ended up going to a sleep study doctor. I haven't gotten the sleep study done. I think they're trying to get it approved through my insurance, but I did go back for my PCP. And these are all the things I'm on now. I'm literally on birth control. I was folic acid deficient. I was vitamin B12 deficient and like I said before I was vitamin D deficient I only have one pill left on that and then I've been taking these happy hormone PCOS multivitamin uh, that has myo inositol myo inositol inositol whatever these it's funny because I see them all over TikTok shop but I got them from the internet like I just saw it and I was like oh I can give that a shot and I've been feeling so much better i'm not saying that's what you should do you should consult with your doctor but y'all my vitamins just being low my hormones being all over the place me not supporting my hormones in the way that i should be was detrimental it changed me it changed my personality it changed who i was i wasn't optimistic i wasn't excited about things i just it just completely changed who i was and uh, it was hard for me so i am back at it I feel so much better and I cannot wait to get my sleep study done. I can keep you guys updated if you like. Just go ahead and make sure you like this video. But that's what my journey has looked like. Luckily, I wasn't dating throughout that time. I had a lot of time to focus on myself. I was playing tennis, figuring out the things that I love and on and off birth control. Leslie on birth control is completely different from the person on birth control. It saves me every time. Like I feel so much better when I am on birth control.
I think I just got lazy. I didn't feel like taking it. And then everyone on the internet tells you not to take it. So you're like, maybe I'm not gonna, maybe I'm not supposed to do that. But sometimes I like my mindset is I'm here for a good time in a long time. So I'm not gonna stress myself out about being on a birth control that's literally helping me feel better. I can live a long time, but by the time I'm stressed and depressed and, and I do that for a long period of time, that's going to affect my health even more than freaking birth control. So I had to make a decision and maybe I'll do a separate video about like how birth control really helped me. But yeah, guys, like I'm, I feel like a new person. I feel so good. I still get tired sometimes. I still get a little bit of ickiness to it because I'm like, oh my God, I'm so afraid that I'm going to feel like how I used to feel and it's never gonna go away like you're always gonna have a little bit of depression anxiety that's just life but I just feel really blessed and honored that God gave me a platform to be able to share those things because that's the point really at the end of the day for one that you guys know that you're not alone that this is what people go through and also like you can fight through it so I'm in my fighting part of life and it's been good like I'm really super happy I'm very ecstatic and like I said I can't wait to share with you guys like what the, sl the sleep test says and getting used to if I have to get a sleep apnea machine like getting comfortable with that and just advocating for yourself like, I have my follow-up with my PCP because I did not take the Ozempic I forgot to add this I did not take the prescription I'm like I'm not taking it and I didn't and I said I would very much rather do everything else first I wouldn't want to see if I can go the diet route, the health route. I hate diets, but I rather go the nutrition route than to do the injection because at the end of the day, the moment you stop taking Ozempic, you're just gonna go right back to where you were. So no hate to the people who are on Ozempic, like great for you. But I do have a couple of people who have been on Ozempic and they've confided in me that as soon as they got off, they gained all their weight back and they were like, what's the point? Like what was literally the point? And that's my big fear. My biggest fear is that I'm going to get on an injection or a quick fix and then the moment I get off of it, I'm gonna go right back to square one. And I refuse. I wanna really deal with the root cause and go from there. It's so funny because this lip oil looks exactly like my lip color. Like it doesn't do anything. Initially when I bought it, that's why I liked it. But now I'm looking, I'm like, why did I buy this? All right, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, DM me, comment below, let me know what you're thinking. If you have anything that you think might help me, please let me know because I'm for getting any advice that will help me through this journey. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.